brothers and sisters, it's not an easy topic. The more difficult we make marriage, the less barakah there will be in our lives. The Prophet ﷺ has asked us to make it easy for others. The Prophet ﷺ has asked those who have daughters and sisters and, and, and women in their guardianship to say, if someone proposes and comes forth with decent, reasonable character, reasonable deen, let it happen. The difficulty with us, we make nikah so difficult that we facilitate adultery and zina. That's what happens. We facilitate adultery because we don't realize that by making halal hard, you make haram simple and easy. By putting an obstacle in the face of halal, you are a vehicle and a tool of making haram something that is probably looked at as the only way out for the young. So when the mahar or the sadaq, as they call it, is very high, it becomes a problem. Yesterday, I officiated two nikah here in Abuja. I was the imam officiating. I told them I don't want to know the sadaq. They said, what do you mean? I said, have you agreed? Look at the, you agreed? We agreed. You agreed? We agreed. Witnesses, we have agreed? Nisadaq? Yes. I don't need to know. It's not a competition. We don't want to tell people 50,000, 5,000, 10,000, 2,000, 1,000, or 100. I don't want to tell them. We say, have you accepted her in your marriage with the sadaq you have agreed upon in the presence of the witnesses? And the answer will come, yes, that's enough. But we make it a big thing in some communities. I'm not too sure about here, but I was just saying something that I know for many years. Some communities, they are excited to say, how much, how much was it, how much was it? They say, ah, 15 million. They say, what, 15 million? When I get married, it'll be 20. It becomes a, a competition. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us not to be, you know, to try and have the least expense. Don't be extravagant. Don't set the bar so high that everyone needs to marry. You have to have this function and that function and before the marriage and during the marriage and after the marriage and so on. And you have to have a function here. Then you've got to travel to Jordan and have one there. Then you've got to go to America and have one there. All that, cut it for the sake of Allah. You want barakah in your life? have a simple wedding where Allah and his Rasul are the main, main focus, main focus. So people are saying, talk to us about settling down. I've spoken to young, young boys here in Nigeria and a few of the, the, the girls that I've had the opportunity of uh, asking as well. The biggest problem is it's not easy to get married. That's what they say. It's tough. You know, we look for men who are wealthy already. And yet when we got married, there was no wealth in our pockets. Mm. Marriage age is once you are majority, age of majority. There's no fixed age in Islam to say you have to be this age or some. Once you, according to the norm of your society, are ready to get married, Alhamdulillah, you're ready. Perhaps we would like to look at it anywhere between 18, 20, 21. There's no fixed age actually, but it changes with the changing of time based on several factors. At the moment, we're looking at approximately, I'd like to think 20 is a good age, but people might go a little bit this way, that way. That is an age that you are sexually perhaps at a level where you need the opposite sex now in your life, right? And to be very fair, you would not have even started a living, earning a living properly. To be very fair. Why did Allah keep it that way? that I need to marry at about 20, but I wouldn't really, so that the two of you can grow together, you can do ibadah together, you can actually uh, earn, you know, with one another's help and assistance in this way or that way you can grow, and then you appreciate what you've earned, you appreciate the children you have and so much more. That's one of the reasons. There are many other reasons, some we may know, some we may not know. But if Allah really wanted that a man must be very, very wealthy before he gets married, then the rule would be that if when you are 20, you can only marry a man who's 70. That would be the rule. Because by that time, you have money. By that time, you are settled, you can spoil your, your wife. But Allah wants you to taste what life is all about. Allah wants you to go through the challenges. How many of the slightly older mothers that we have here, 
back in the day, they were struggling, struggling. I know in my own life back in the day, you know, we, we didn't have it easy going. And over time, my parents didn't own a house for years on end. And even a car, it was something that came years later. And today a car is a condition of the children of the same people who didn't have cars. And the phone, wallahi, and everything else. You didn't, you know, you ask them, so when did you buy your house? They say, ah, 20 years after marriage, we afforded it. But my son-in-law, he needs two houses. Mm. One holiday house in wherever, and the other one here, and so on. And you need to have this and that. Come on, don't make it tough. So when you speak of marriage, you need a whole conference on marriage, actually. And I believe there's going to be one happening here sometime in April. Uh, a major international marriage conference of a very high standard is coming here. I think one ummah is partnering in that. So at that juncture, they will address this topic perhaps a little bit better. And they're going to be specialists from across the globe coming to talk about marriage here. I was just telling the brother today that I think in Abuja, they're going to need a whole 10 times this size when you're talking of marriage because they are going to come. And one of the highlights of that is they actually do matchmaking, subhanAllah. They actually do matchmaking in a very professional way. I haven't seen exactly how it works, but I believe from some of my colleagues that it's done in a really professional way, properly done with guidance and guardianship and whatever. However, this topic, as you've seen, I've only discussed one aspect of it, and that is the aspect of making it easy. Together with that, you look at the divorce rate. How high is it? Extremely high. Extremely high. Today, someone told me that in northern Nigeria, divorce is extremely high. I said, stop blaming northern Nigerians. Don't say that. It's all over the world. It's not just unique to your place. Because we've become materialistic. We put so much pressure. And our focus is materialism. We've lost character, conduct, and we've lost the connection with Allah. So, on either side, we want, 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 want this, want that, want that. If it's not there, ah, I'm not happy in my marriage. Why? Ah, that uh, Gucci. He didn't even get it for me. I'm not happy in your marriage, Gucci. I don't. I stopped wearing a watch. People say, you know, how come you don't you don't wear a watch? I said, because I can tell the time from my phone. The phone has actually done us a lot of favors. You know that. This smartphone is really smart. You know why? You don't need a camera. You don't need a, all these big machines you see here. We can replace them with this little phone. You don't need a watch. You don't need a calculator. You know, so many things you don't need all on the phone. The sad thing is some people say, well, I don't need a wife also because on the phone. Audhu billah. That's wrong. So we need to know what we should be replacing and what not. But my beloved brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful topic. Let's develop our character. Many of us fail. When you get married, I challenge you to be the best husband you could ever be. It is worth it for one woman to say, what a lovely man. And for the whole world to think you're a nice guy, but they know who this guy is here. Behind the scenes, he's a real, you know, uh, problem. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. There's one quick point that I thought of regarding the previous uh, question that was uh, addressed to my colleague. You know, when your family gives you problems for, uh, as you become more and more religious, I've had people who've become Muslims and their families have not accepted it and they've been very angry and upset and what's the advice I give them? A lot of advice, but one quick point that, that will be helpful. Develop your character and conduct to such a high degree that in a short space of time, they will see this is the better person, a better version of the person than it was, than they were before. And they will begin to appreciate your closeness to Allah. Because some of us, as we get closer to Allah, we become arrogant. We start saying to our own family members, you, you're going to Jahannam. I mean, who gives you the authority to say that? If that is the case, then you are a part of the problem. Piety and God consciousness comes with leniency and soft nature. Remember that. You want to gauge a person's piety, even your own. Ask yourself, how lenient and soft have I become? And how do I address others and so on? Yes, when it comes to myself, I'm hard. I have to be hard. I'm going to try and do things proper. But for others, I'll talk, I'll try, I'll smile, I'll talk. I I'll try my best with this one, that one, etc., etc. And that's a sign of real closeness to Allah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too so please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.